How 2022 F1 success is determined by a wooden plank. Formula One and wooden planks. If you're someone who doesn't really watch F1 all too often, you'd probably be a little confused as to what the relationship would be between these two. However, in Austria, the team spent a great deal of time discussing wooden planks with the FIA. Why? Well, they were discussing how these bits of wood are mounted underneath the F1 cars and how much the mountings used to fit these bits of wood are allowed to bend. Trust me, as much as that sounds rather boring and I'm sure if you were a team representative at the meeting you were probably checking the time for when lunch was, it's actually an incredibly important part of this year's cars. So, let me explain why. All F1 cars run narrow wooden planks mounted underneath their floors to prevent the cars from running too low to the ground, which could cause them to suddenly lose all their downforce, potentially leading to a crash. They've been mandated in F1 since 1994, following the accident that sadly saw the passing of Ayrton Senna at Imola. These narrow wooden planks are fitted underneath every car on the grid, and if they wear away too much, cars can be excluded from races. Now, we don't tend to see planks all too often because, well, they're underneath the car. Usually, when we do see them, it means there's been quite a shocking crash, meaning the car is upside down. An example of that being recently at Silverstone this year with Zhou Guan Yu. So really, we're pretty happy not seeing the flaws at all. The safety issue around planks has returned this season because the new 2022 F1 cars need to run as low to the ground as possible to get their aerodynamics to work properly. They also have to run very stiff suspension for the same reason. There's much less emphasis on the front and rear wings this year and more about airflow underneath the car. This has led to a very rough ride over bumps and curbs, which has led some drivers, including George Russell and Carlos Sainz, to question the potential impact on drivers' long-term health. F1 cars are very stiff anyway, and because of the way the drivers are positioned in their cars, vibrations from bumps and curbs travel through their spines, which can lead to injury. The FIA has now stepped in, developing a new system to measure and limit how much current F1 cars can and are allowed to bounce. I'm pretty convinced the FIA listened to our podcast as we discussed a BPM bouncing per minute scale before this was all announced. I'm looking forward to our check in the post. This process began in Canada, the race immediately after Baku, where Lewis Hamilton said the bouncing of his Mercedes was so bad he might not be physically able to drive in Montreal. His Mercedes team was criticised for reacting to the FIA's plans by adding a part to the car to give extra stiffness and support to its floor. Rivals said this part was not allowed by the current rules as written and threatened to protest. So Mercedes took it off. Ferrari and Red Bull also began criticising the FIA for interfering with the competition, essentially arguing that Mercedes was the only team seriously troubled by this bouncing and that Mercedes should fix its own car rather than relying on the FIA to tweak the rules. I would have loved to have seen the emails sent by Ferrari and Red Bull to the FIA, and to really get their point across, they should have sent over the meme of the guy riding on the bike and putting the stick in the front wheel. That really would have done the job, trust me. In the course of its investigations into how to limit the bouncing of current F1 cars, the FIA began to suspect that some cars, said to be the Ferrari and the Red Bull, have found ways to make their mountings for these planks, known as skid blocks, bend more than the rules were intended to allow. Mercedes said it was shocked to learn of this, feeling its engineering team had missed an opportunity to make the W13 faster. Mercedes' main problem this season has been the need to run the car so high off the ground to stop the bouncing that it loses too much downforce. Extra flexibility in the skid blocks would allow the car to run lower to the ground without wearing away the plank to an illegal level. The FIA now plans to tighten up these rules, starting at the Belgian Grand Prix. The amount of bouncing will be measured using sensors as the cars are being driven, and teams will then have three races to get the situation under control before they are considered to be breaking the rules. Red Bull is particularly unhappy because it feels the FIA is trying to change the rules mid-season, and probably because Red Bull knows this change will help Mercedes. The FIA feels though it has to act because not doing so would continue to put drivers' safety at risk, 
particularly on very bumpy circuits. It's been announced recently that for 2023 there will be a few more concrete changes to minimise porpoising even further. There will be a 25mm raising of the floor edges, a raising of the underfloor diffuser throat, the introduction of more stringent lateral floor deflection tests, and the introduction of a more accurate sensor to help quantify the aerodynamic oscillation. So in a nutshell, and in terms that I understand, stiffer, higher floors with better sensors on them basically. There you have it, the reason why wooden planks are being talked about so much. What do you think? Is the new ruling from the FIA fair? Let us know in the comments section below.